All right, in the last video, we ended on a cliffhanger, as always, right? We ended on a cliffhanger. We had just learned how to program the robot to move to the wall and back. And the cliffhanger was, how can we take this useless meth method that walks to the wall and back and turn it into a useful one that actually measures how far away the wall is and returns an answer to us? And I think we're going to write that code right now. So we'll call that method make some room on the screen. Here we go. We'll call that method distance to wall. It's going to determine the distance to the wall. What's the return type of that method going to be? What kind of answer do we get back? Go to wall and back, that just returned void, right? Meaning no return value. We've written a number of methods that determine a true or false condition and give us back a boolean answer. This one's going to give us a number, so that means the return type is going to be int. We get back an integer. Okay, now how do we find the distance to the wall? Well, we pretty much do what we did before, but I think we'll, uh, we'll instead of copying code and pasting it, we'll, uh, we'll redo it, because I think that's, it's helpful to see. We'll say, let's see, I need to keep track of the number of steps I am from the start, and initially I'm zero steps from my starting square. I start where I start on the starting square, zero steps from it. And then while the front is clear, my robot is going to take a step forward. It's going to move, but it's also going to increment that number that it's remembering. So all of this code is exactly like it was before for going to the wall and back. Now the difference occurs when we go back. Before, the way we went back is we said, while the number of steps from the start is greater than zero, we will take a step back by calling the backup method that's defined somewhere else in the same file, and we'll decrement the number of steps from the start by saying num steps from start equals num steps from start minus one, and I'm realizing up here I, for some reason, stopped halfway through my variable name. Okay, so every time, in the beginning, every time we move, we increment in the second loop on our way back. So let's see, this is now at wall, time to head back. Oops, time to head back. In the second loop, as long as I haven't gotten back to the starting square, which is square zero, I'll back up and decrease my count, and then I'll stop at the right point. The problem is, when I get to the end, I've forgotten how many steps to the wall. I don't remember how far away the wall was anymore. I had the answer right here. When I was at the wall, the answer was num steps from start. It was in that variable. But then I decreased that variable back to zero, and by the time I got to the end, I'd forgotten how many steps to the wall. Huh. It's almost like I need to remember something else. And what do I use whenever I need to remember something? A variable. And when did I have the value that I want to remember? over here when I'm at the wall. So when I get to the wall, I will save the number of steps because that's the answer. right? I'm going to save it in a variable called, uh, well, I guess it's the distance. So we'll save in a variable called distance. So I'm declaring that I will store an integer value in distance. And what integer value do I want to store in distance? I want to store the value that's currently in num steps from start. So now I've saved the number of steps I took when I'm at the wall. Now I can back up the way I did before until num steps from start goes back down to zero, but when I get to the end, I still have distance, which was the original, or sorry, the, the value, the maximum value of num steps from start, the one when we were at the wall. So now that's my answer, so I should simply say I would like to return that distance. Let's, uh, let's give that all a try. I just hit F5 to compile, and uh, Dr. Java seems pretty happy there. So we will uh, load up my hallway, and we'll, uh, we'll confuse the robot by taking a few steps. Let's start uh, here. Right, how far is the robot from the wall? It's one, two, three, four, five steps. So we will try calling my distance to wall method and we'll see what number we get back. And notice I'm calling it without a semicolon so that it looks to Dr. Java like an expression instead of like a statement. 
and when I use it like an expression, Dr. Java will actually print out, because it's friendly, what answer we get back from that. So let's see if we get 5. Ooh, 5! Look at that! Alright, let's see if we can trick it. What if we were... Let's take a couple more steps forward. What if we were just one away from the wall? Does the program still work? Do we... Let's, it, does it tell us the distance from the wall here is one? It does! What if we are all the way at the wall? Oops. All the way at the wall. Will we get a distance of zero? Actually, before we run this, let's, let's see if we can figure out if it will work. Let's look at the code to see what it will do if we start at the wall. If we start at the wall, numb steps from start is zero, is the front clear? No. We're already at the wall, so we never enter this loop. We're at the wall, it's time to head back. We save the number of steps. The number of steps is what? It's zero. Since it never entered the loop, it never incremented, it's still zero. So distance will now also store zero. Then, while num steps from start is greater than zero, but num steps from start is zero, so that zero is not greater than zero, right? Zero is equal to zero, it's not greater than zero. So we never enter this loop and we return distance which is zero so we should get back that go we should get back an answer of zero and we do and you don't see any movement because we never entered any of those loops so that's kinda nice let's see that seems like it it rounds out our introduction to integer values but I'll warn you that uh, the problems we can throw at you now that we have variables, now we have integers, they can uh, they can be quite tricky. So I think it's going to take a while before you feel comfortable with this idea. And if it does take you a while, you're in good company because students, I think, have have always found that this is about the point in learning to program when uh, if if you use the videos in the sequence I'm offering them, when it starts feeling like we know a lot, and we have a lot of choices about how to go forward, and we have to think. And there are a lot of there are multiple ways to solve problems and so on. So uh, I'll leave it there. The good news is we will see variables over and over again. So even if you feel like you only barely feel comfortable with them at this point, everything we do going forward is going to use variables and we'll get a better and better idea of where they're useful and, and how to use them well. So I'll s and, and e even more kinds of variables. We're going to learn not just integers and Boolean values that we can store, but all sorts of other things we might store in a variable. And in addition to that, we're going to learn um, that we can actually use variables in other ways than just declaring them inside of a method. That we can declare variables that exist for longer periods of time, and we can even declare variables that represent values we're taking in to a method, and, and we'll get to that probably uh, very, very shortly. So I'll see you in another in another video. I hope, uh, hope you have a good feel for the basics of Boolean and integer values uh, variables now.